Hi, and welcome to a very short introduction. From ancient Greece to branding, globalisation to Homer, and logic to fashion, we'll showcase a concise and dynamic insight into a range of diverse topics for wherever your curiosity may lead you. So here is today's very short introduction. Hello, my name's Kathleen Taylor, and I'm the author of Dementia, A Very Short Introduction. What is dementia? Dementia is the name we give to a group of terminal brain diseases that slowly damage and destroy brain tissue. It's one of the world's leading causes of death and usually affects older people, though it can also strike in midlife or, very rarely, in childhood. Because dementia can change personality, take away memories, and deprive people of their social life, independence, even their ability to communicate, it's one of the most feared of all illnesses. So what are the key aspects everyone should know about dementia? Well, firstly, dementia isn't technically an illness, but a collection of symptoms. Some of these are cognitive, such as slowed thinking, memory loss, or problems finding your way around your environment. Some affect the emotions. People with dementia are easily stressed and overloaded and can be very anxious or volatile. And some affect how people sleep, how they behave, or how they move. So it's not just about cognition. It's not just about older people either. About 95% of cases are what they call sporadic, so there's no clear cause. But the rest are linked to some kind of genetic mutation, which makes the people who carry it much more likely to get dementia and to get it early, perhaps as early as your 30s or 40s. It's estimated that in the UK there are 42,000 people with earlier onset dementia. So it's not a small number, although it's a small percentage. There are different types of dementia with different symptoms and patterns of change in the brain. Most common are Alzheimer's and vascular dementia, which tend to affect memory and thinking, whereas frontotemporal Lewy body and Parkinsonian dementia tend to affect movement more. Dementia can also be a symptom of other illnesses, such as advanced AIDS, and it can be temporary, for example, after a head injury or ICU treatment. Even when it's permanent, a diagnosis of dementia is not an all hope abandon ye who enter here scenario. Admittedly, there's no cure, yet, but people can live well with dementia for years. With early diagnosis and good planning especially, the condition allows people time to adapt, to come to terms with it, to manage the present and organise for the future. One of the most interesting stories unfolding in dementia research lately is that it's not just about the brain. We now know a lot more about what actually is going on. So, for example, we know that abnormal proteins build up in the brain, that inflammation may well be involved. Metabolic disturbance seems to play a role, things like diabetes or high cholesterol, that sort of thing. Genetics definitely plays a role, but it's a very complicated one. And also things like stress, trauma and wear and tear. By stress, I'm talking here about both physical stress, i.e. things that actually stress your cells and prevent them working properly, and psychological stress, i.e. you know the office bully or whatever. So all of those seem to be putting together the picture of a very complicated set of conditions that give rise to what we call dementia. Going back to those environmental factors, as they're called, so non-genetic conditions, they affect when and how quickly dementia develops, even in cases where there's a mutation which makes it extremely likely that you'll get the condition. These risk and protective environmental factors are things like sleep, diet, physical and mental health, psychological stress, as I've said, whether someone smokes or drinks alcohol, having good relationships, access to health care and exposure to pollution, and so on. So there are an awful lot of these things that can, if you like, plug in to how likely you are to get it and when you're likely to get it, quite apart from what genetic lottery you have. In other words, putting it as terms of bad news, this is a fiendishly complicated problem. We always knew the brain was complicated, but we're not even yet fully aware of just how complicated it is. On the other hand, that's good news in a way, because there's a huge amount of work going on to find drugs and other therapies which can help. And because dementia is much better understood these days, that reduces the stigma and fear, which make having dementia much worse than it needs to be. Another thing that comes out of it is that dementia is not seen as something quite so apart as it used to be, more as a chronic illness. Now, all chronic illnesses change the people who have them. Human bodies and brains adapt. But all those people who have chronic illnesses are still people. And that's the same for people with dementia. 
what got me interested in the subject? Well, I've always been interested in dementia. I've always been fascinated by how brains work and therefore what happens when they go wrong. However, when I started out in neuroscience, brains were still often thought of in isolation as kind of organic computers. I've always imagined them instead in their bodily context, cramped inside the skull, padded with membranes, stuffed with blood vessels, sucking in nutrients and toxins and immune signals and hormones. Dementia really brings home how the cognitive functions we're so proud of can be affected by bodily disturbances. Infections like COVID, diseases like diabetes, even pollution and what we eat, all of that affects the brain. Plus, dementia is a huge scientific challenge because the condition is so immensely complicated. And it's a huge social challenge, not least because treatments that could help with dementia might also help with ageing more generally, but they might also be extremely expensive. So there's lots of issues there. Finally, like many people, I also have a personal interest because two of my relatives were diagnosed with dementia within a short period of time. One was later told she had another neurological condition, so that got me interested in questions of diagnosis when I'd stopped being outraged about people getting it wrong and so on. The other, well, seeing her decline was what really pushed me into trying to understand and write about dementia. <laughs>